Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everybody. This is Tom from Adventure Coordinators. Um, we're just going to give it a couple of minutes because there are people still logging in, and uh, we'll start uh, probably at 7.02 or 7.03 or so. And good evening, everybody. Tom from Adventure Coordinators. Welcome to this uh, webinar on small uh, ship cruising. Glad you were all able to make it because I'm sure you've got lots of uh, webinars in your life these days. So uh, without further ado, I'll uh, go ahead and introduce uh, Adventure Coordinators for those of you who haven't dealt with us yet. Incidentally, I see people from across the country, which is really neat. We've got uh, people from Montreal, from Calgary, Victoria, um, I see the uh, Maritimes here, and I see people from just a block away. So this is all really uh, neat to see that. So Adventure Coordinators is a um, boutique travel agent specializing in Adventure Center. And um, it's basically, I'm the travel agent, Tom Garrels. I've got 25 years of agency experience. The reason people like to deal with us is because I've been to 103 countries and all continents. Hence the tagline uh, that we have, travel experience working for you. What that looks like on a world map is this. There's a couple of blank spots there, West Africa and Central Asia mainly. And you will see in there Armenia and Georgia, which is where I would have been about a month ago. But we all know what happened, that little thing called COVID. Um, were you one-stop adventure shop? We uh, deal with small group tours from a whole bunch of really excellent tour operators around the world. Uh, tonight we have Peregrine and in our other uh, upcoming webinars, there will be other uh, companies presenting their uh, mode of travel and their destinations. And we also do tailor-made adventures for those people who want to travel in their own bubble or with their own family group or group of colleagues or friends, we can tailor make uh, your own trip. As well, we do airfare and insurance, and of course, we are registered with uh, TICO, the Travel Industry Council of Ontario. Um, we've been getting some really great feedback from clients. This is probably uh, one that I'm most proud of. Um, Tom, without a doubt, you've been the most amazing travel assistant ever. Well, I'm not going to brag about that more, but if you look on the right-hand side, there is a little clipping from the Globe and Mail. A lady whom I didn't know until COVID hit, she called me up from Uganda and said, help, I'm stuck, get me home. And uh, I did. She wrote a letter to the Globe and Mail out of gratitude. And uh, that was, of course, a really cool thing to have. Um, 
I'm also proud that Venture Coordinators is uh, very high on sustainability. We often carbon offsets through Planet Air, uh, and our 1% for the Future program means that if you buy carbon offsets for your flights, um, I take the same amount of money from my company profits and plant trees on the uh, Niagara Escarpment under the offices of the Bruce Trail. And I also go out uh, once or twice a year to do Bruce Trail maintenance and uh, make sure that the trail is accessible to everybody. Finally, our website, the most important page there is the Tour Finder, which you'll see here. If you go there, you can uh, find all kinds of tours. I've uploaded what I think are the best tours from across the platform of all the tour operators that we represent. And uh, that allows you to find the best tours from around the world, from just about every destination on our platform. And you don't have to go through 10 different uh, companies' websites. Finally, uh, why small ship uh, cruising? Well, they're small groups. It's sustainable travel rather than the big ships that have up to 5,000 people. Uh, um, you know, these uh, small ships hold far fewer people. Uh, we can take you to smaller ports and you can get in touch with culture and nature. And as I like to say, say goodbye to the castles of the sea, the ship with casinos, theaters, a dozen restaurants and 5,000 of your closest friends all in the pool together. Say hello to small ship cruising. And tonight we have uh, Cassandra Brown from uh, Peregrine Adventures. And um, I'm going to hand over the uh, presentation to her. And let's see if I remember how to do that. Here we go. And Kaz, you're on. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tom. Should be able to see my screen there now. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, for those of you tuning in, appreciate your time this evening. and. Myself and Tom go way back. Um, I would love to write a five-star review for him. Um, definitely a great guy to work with. Uh, and it's a fantastic topic to talk about. I think it's a very topical topic with COVID-19 and the cruising industry at this time and how things are changing moving forward with COVID-19. So tonight I'm gonna talk to you about our adventure cruising program. So our small yachts, um, as well as our small ships, as well as our Galapagos itineraries, Galapagos ships, and maybe just I'll tease you with a little bit of our Antarctica at the end. So I am from Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures. So I'm going to be focusing on Peregrine, but I'll explain what that means. So take a visual on myself. This picture, don't uh, judge me too much on the quality of it. I just pulled it off my laptop today. But this picture was actually taken aboard one of our Peregrine Adventures sailing experiences in Lake Ontario with Tom a couple years ago. Now, this is an exclusive experience that we don't offer to our intrepid travelers yet, but that would be pretty cool if we did. Um, and again, intrepid travel and Peregrine Adventures, to give you a little bit of a background, intrepid travel um, is actually the world's largest adventure travel company. We've been around for 30 plus years. We are in over 100 different countries, all seven continents. And Peregrine Adventures is our sister company. We're going to be focusing on Peregrine Adventures tonight because it is our premium brand or our premium intrepid style of travel. So when we talk about adventure travel, adventure means something different to everyone. For us, I like to say it's more of the tasting, the touching, the smelling, the getting culturally immersed in the trying something new. And when we talk about big ship cruising versus small ship cruising, those aspects of travel really ring true as well. So with adventure cruising, of course, we're in over 100 different countries with our land product. With our small ship sailings, we are right now going into 2021, we're specifically in the Dalmatian coast, the Adriatic coast, Greek islands, Italy and Croatia's northern coast, Turkey, uh, Spain, Portugal and Morocco, Tahiti and the Pearls of French Polynesia, the Seychelles, the Galapagos Islands, and a few more. So why will you love adventure cruising? Tom mentioned a few of these, and I'm going to highlight these throughout um, the presentation tonight, but I really want to stress that it is all about the destination. 
So forget the big buffets, forget the casinos, forget the live entertainment in the evening. So this is truly about the destination, just using a ship as your transportation. So a few of the highlights, as Tom pointed out, small ships mean docking in the center of town. It also means only unpacking once. I myself have never been a big cruiser. I do enjoy the small ships. I have been on a cruise before. It's not my cup of tea. But if there's one thing that will sell me on cruising, it's the fact that you pack once, arrive into a new port every day, and you don't have to pack your bag up until the end of the trip. That's fantastic in my eyes. It's a sus sustainable alternative to cruising, which I'll get into as well. You get to know your fellow travelers with a maximum of 30 to 50 people on board, local flavors, whether that's on the ship or on shore, and it's almost like having your own little private yacht. This is also a great option to add to a land itinerary. There's a few more things that I want to highlight. So when I talk about responsible travel and responsible cruising and a greener way to cruise, all of our trips are carbon offset. So Everything that we emit into the air, into the water, every train that we take, every car that we take on our land itineraries, everything that we produce, we do carbon offset. Small ships inherently mean less waste, and you get to visit small ports, which helps reduce over tourism. When it comes to our service on board, um, it's gonna be premium service. And you're not going to have crowds. There's no lineup at the buffet in the morning. You don't have someone dancing in the front hallway greeting you with a bottle of hand sanitizer. Um, it's just a little bit of a different experience from big ship cruising. Our crew to customer ratio is one to three. We have local leaders that guide you on shore. Our maximum group size on board our ship is actually 50, unless you're in Antarctica, which we're on an expedition vessel. Um, our accommodation throughout is going to be four star. Um, they're well appointed rooms. They have an ensuite bathroom, air conditioning. And when it comes to local taste, we like to say that 90% of the food we offer on board is locally sourced. So that means that your onboard chef is going into port and picking up fresh fish, um, fresh eggs, milk, whatever they, they need for that voyage. Um, and most meals are included on the tour, which is fantastic as well. You get the best of the land with having that transportation included between the islands as well. So you get to explore the highlights as well as the hidden gems, see the authentic and the local experiences, visit purely and supremely secluded islands that you wouldn't be able to get to on a land tour as well. And at sea, I think one of my favorite aspects of adventure cruising is that the captains can drop anchor wherever the group wants within reason. You can swim off the back of the boat, um, snorkel, kayak, and stand up paddleboard. So why do our travelers choose to do adventure cruising? The first one is that the, many of them enjoy that you have a boutique hotel on the water. Because small ships usually mean docking in the center of town, um, you can come and go as you please from the ship. It also means unpacking once, like I mentioned. When you're in a small group, you get that personal connection. You know, on a big cruise, you may pass by people and never see them again on the entire uh, trip. With fewer than 50 people on board, every adventure cruise, it's a perfect size for mingling and happy hour, and you really get to know your fellow travelers as well as your crew um, and, and captain. And it ends up being a big family, I guess, private yacht experience at the end of the day. I've heard that sometimes the captain will bring out their private stash of schnapps or vodka or whatever is needed to the country that they're traveling through at the time and share it with the, the passengers. And of course, the immersive local experiences. So at Intrepid and Peregrine, what we do best, um, it really comes into those onshore experiences. So every day you get into the local culture, see well-known sites from a perspective um, and discover hidden spots you would have never really heard of uh, but you certainly won't forget. So why experience adventure cruising with Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures? Touched on that real life experience aspect, that's huge for us. Um, so we really like to get you past the port cities, uh, 
get you into the local culture as much as possible. And your local leader is definitely going to help you with that. So whether it's visiting um, the market in Turkey, um, selecting a fish for a local restaurant to prepare for your dinner, enjoying this fresh and tasty dish while street performers serenade you with music, or perhaps it's in Croatia and visiting a lesser known island and enjoying a wine tasting, a nibble of local delicacies. Lestavo is actually an island we visit. It's currently suffering from a declining and aging population. And our visit to this beautiful island directly supports the local industries. Or it could just be swimming or kayaking past the sea lion, wandering amongst giant Galapagos tortoises, and seeing the famous blue-footed boobies up close and personal while you enjoy a sunset drink. On our adventure cruises, something that's quite unique as well, because um, if you're really concerned and you're a person who thinks about the price point up front and wants to know what's included, I'm like that as well. We do offer a pretty inclusive package. So with these adventure, adventure cruises, your shore excursions, just like our regular peregrine land tours, uh, where you enjoy expertly curated onshore experiences every single day during your tour with a focus on local authentic, those are included. There are a few exceptions, uh, but for the most part, these are included, except when you're in your free time. Port charges are included, daily tipping's included, your airport arrival transfer to starting point of trip, either hotel or port, depending on where you're going, wine and fruit basket on embarkation, a uh, minimum of two meals per day. Most voyages are full board though. Kayaking, snorkeling, equipment, stand up paddle boarding, and on many of our voyages, solo travelers can be matched up in a twin share cabin. So there's no mandatory single supplement. Some of our ships do have triple rooms and single rooms, but most are double occupancy. And I keep alluding to that mystical local leader. All of our trips have local leaders um, that run the tour essentially on land. There is always one dedicated uh, Peregrine Adventures or Intrepid Travel local leader. On board our adventure cruising trips, we do have two leaders minimum. Um, when on shore excursions, the group actually breaks up into smaller groups for sightseeing to provide that dynamic small group experience. So let's say we have a full trip in the Seychelles and we have 50 people on board. Uh, you won't be traveling around in, in those large groups. We'll have much smaller groups so you get the intimate experience. Also, you'll have additional local leaders in destination. And we, on these trips, we do cater to the Peregrine Adventures and Intrepid Travel Premium Traveler. So it's still adventure, um, embracing the spirit of adventure, but with a softer landing and with a little bit of the finer things in life um, in mind as well. So this is something that's really dear, near and dear to my heart as well as Tom's. Um, so I'll reiterate it again, when we talk about responsible travel, it is no secret that traditional cruises um, have an impact on environments and the communities that they visit. That's why we're committing to a new greener way of cruising. Fun fact, for many years, the uh, large cruise industry has been the fastest growing industry um, in our realm. So compared to land tours and compared to all inclusives um, and other forms of travel. On our trips, we use smaller vessels, as mentioned, that generate less waste and leave a smaller footprint. Also, the ability to reach smaller ports also means we're doing our bit to reduce over-tourism in already bursting destinations like the Brobnik, Split, etc. We have no single-use plastic rules on board. So on each of our trips, um, and this includes when we're sourcing our meals from local producers on these trips as well. So in our trip notes before you embark, we will always advise that you bring a reusable water bottle and our local leaders will be able to provide you with uh, filling taps on board or help you source them when you are on land as well. Each departure, as I mentioned, has also been 100% carbon offset by a range of renewable energy initiatives as well. Um, one thing that we like to talk about a bit, but I won't go into it in detail, is that we are B Corp certified, which is one of the highest standards that you can get to as a business when it comes to looking after people and planet. We have to recertify this every three years. 
It looks into everything from the ground up. And it doesn't just say that you're doing well, it points out where you can be doing better. Um, and now Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures are leaders in the industry. And we're trying to help other travel companies uh, do better and hit their goals as well. So without further ado, let's look at a few of our ships and see where you'll be staying on these magical trips. So this is our MS Galileo. Um, this is a, a ship that we take when we're traveling through Greece, and Turkey, 25 cabins, 49 guests. This is a bit of an aerial view here. And we'll bring it down close uh, and up in front here. I like this view because you can really see how close you are in port um, and how really small the ship is. On our Galileo, this is one of the itineraries that you could uh, take part in. It's our cruising the islands of Greece and Turkey, starting in Athens and ending in Athens. You will notice just from looking at the map that we visit islands that normally don't get visited on classic Greek tours. Um, you can see just clearly from here to give you an idea, seven breakfasts, four lunches, and five dinners are included. And you're spending the majority of your trip um, on, on the ship as well. So when it comes to included activities, I'll give you a little bit of a view of what's entailed, but things like sunset dinners at the Temple of Poseidon, um, local bus visit to beautiful island area, beach barbecues, uh, orientation walks, sunset drinks, monastery visits, visiting Ephesus, and a captain's dinner to cap it off at the end. You're going to see um, the highlights because you are traveling as a tourist, of course. So things like seeing the monastery. This is actually the second oldest monastery in Greece. Absolutely picturesque. Um, Definitely the classic Greek architecture for sure, um, as well as Ephesus. So because this trip does include Turkey, I think you get the best of both worlds, in my opinion, Greece and Turkey on the same trip. Sounds like the perfect vacation to me. Um, but then you're also going to get these swim stops. So with any good adventure, it's not just about the destination, it's about the journey of getting there. So like I mentioned before, on all of these trips, because the ships are so small, you can literally jump off the side when it's deemed safe and go for a swim. Um, this is actually one of our swim stops that we take on Folagandros, um, part of the Aegean Sea. Um, we have a barbecue lunch on the beach uh, before setting sail as well. So definitely pack multiple swimsuits. Now, when it comes to the day-to-day, because we are um, in town when we're docking, you can walk right off the ship. In some places, there will be tenders that will need to take you in if we're further out, um, or if it's an island that has a sand bottom and we can't dock. Um, but you can hop off, hop on when you please. If you want to go out for a romantic dinner with your spouse, come back at the wee hours in the morning, it's up to you. And then, of course, the onboard experience. It is a very laid back experience. You do not have to um, adhere to a certain dress code. Of course, we have the captain's dinner, so it's up to you if you would like to dress up. There are theme nights on board. Your local leaders are always there and available to have answer questions, tell jokes. If it is inclement weather, there usually is karaoke, game nights, etc. Shared dining area, indoors and outdoors as well. So quite fun. I'd love to be in Greece right now. I don't know about all of you. So I'll give you an idea of the inner workings of our ship here. Let's go back. There we go. And when we're talking about small ships, this is also one of the added bonuses. There is no getting stuck with the inside cabin, no window option. All of our cabins have guaranteed portholes or windows. You can see right here that this is one of our main level double rooms. Um, and you can see that when you open the door, you walk out right onto the deck. Um, so there's no obstruction. If you are, this is one of our porthole windows, but there are windows that are, are full size as well. So all outside cabins, which means you all have a view, which is fantastic. I mentioned shared dining inside and outside and just beautiful, beautiful sunsets all about. This is our panorama. 
Um, we use this one in Greece as well, but we also use this in the Seychelles. 25 cabins, so 49 guests. This is a picture of our double or two single bedrooms. Um, you can also see that one of my favorite features, of course, because of those swim stops is that swimming platform on the back. All of the ships do have swimming platforms to make it really easy to get in and out of the water. And of course, the staff is there to help you. Um, on our panorama, just like many of our other ships, it's definitely a great experience bonding with the crew, bonding with your fellow travelers uh, in downtime, either when you are sailing or just in the evening when people are heading back to the ship. There's always going to be something going on to just get you a little more immersed in the destination. So whether that is your chef providing a cooking class, maybe it's early morning and hosting a yoga class at sunrise, really the sky is the limit. I know um, on our one of our last uh, tours that we did um, before COVID, one of uh, there's actually a travel agent who was traveling on the tour, and she she's a yogi. She's a real hippy dippy granola lady, lover to death. And she actually got everyone up in the morning to do sunrise yoga. And it was such a highlight for her and such a treat. So definitely a possibility. Now let's bring us into more exotic waters with Tahiti and the pearls of French Polynesia. This is a new trip for us. Um, this one here, eight days, it starts in Papit and ends in Papit uh, for eight days. Uh, experience the vibrant natural landscapes and relaxing pace of French Polynesia. It might sound like a cliche, but the crystal blue waters, colorful coral, and lush green islands of French Polynesia are anything but boring. Snorkelers and swimmers will be totally in their element. And of course, on dry line, you can learn about the fascinating ancient culture of French Polynesia people, um, temples, archaeological sites, and the list goes on. On this trip, of course, our panorama is your base for the experience. And this trip here is a little bit more of an independent option where we include less activities. So you'll see on our activity list, there's less included, but you can make the most of your free time or ask the leaders for uh, their recommendations or book optional activities if um, that interests you. Great for a honeymoon or a couple's retreat, really. The Garden of Seychelles is another one of our more independent experiences. And we do have this one with full optional activities and more independent where you can book as you please. This one here um, is eight days as well. Phenomenal price point for this region. Um, just absolutely beautiful. White sand beaches, brilliant blue seas. Um, this trip is really all about the uninhabited islands that are really difficult to get to by land. Uh, walking through the mangrove forests, spotting giant tortoises, exploring the World Heritage listed natural reserves, and the list goes on. These two in particular, pinch me. Uh, one day we'll definitely get on this trip for sure, myself and Tom. Maybe not together, we'll bring our spouses. <laughs> so right now I, I want to bring you on a tour. Um, how does Croatia sound, everyone? Be beautiful to be there right now. We're going to take a look at our Croatia coastal cruising, split to Dubrovnik, and I'll take you through day by day to see what a day on tour looks like. I got you in the mood. It's actual footage from one of our Croatia coastal cruising tours. This is the first itinerary that we ever launched at Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures. It is eight days split to Dubrovnik, a cult classic. Anyone who's been to Croatia, you've probably been to these blockbuster hits, but have you done it with Intrepid or Peregrine to allow you to get off the beat track, get past those bustling port cities and see a little bit more? Again, you can see that on this trip, we start in split in Dubrovnik, but we head up into Kirka National Park. We're in Bosnia and Herzegovina. There's a lot going on, so let's dive in. This trip takes place on our Peregrine Dalmatia ship. 
Uh, it's 16 cabins with 31 guests. So it is our smallest of our larger ships. You can see that beautiful swimming platform on the back. Look how easy it is to slip right into the beautiful warm water as well. Again, all outside cabins, uh, four star on average, guaranteed porthole or window, ensuite bathroom. This ship does include many of the same inclusions of the other ships, kayaks, snorkel, stand up paddle boards, and fishing equipment, fully stocked bar, a professional bartender, a full daily cabin service, evening turndown service, beach towels, wine and fruit basket, and free Wi Fi on board. It's all the things you would want in destination to really make it comfortable. On this itinerary, we start off in port, uh, in the port of Split. On day one, the first thing that will really happen is you'll have your welcome meeting. So every trip that we offer, you have a starting day welcome meeting, which usually happens at around 5 p.m. We include a complimentary arrival transfer. So if you're coming straight from the airport, straight to start your tour or adventure cruise, that transfer can be from the airport to the port, or if you are booking additional time pre-trip, we can take you from the airport to your accommodation. Bags can be dropped off at the ship. And if you do have that extra time, we actually do offer urban adventures, which are day trips. They're like bite-sized tours. Um, we offer them in Split and other places in Croatia, like our Lonely Planet Experience, The Secrets of Split, Game of Thrones tours, Dalmatian Wine and Dine, Wars, Warriors and Reforms. All of these optional day activities are led by a local leader who is from Split, uh, 12 people maximum. Departures guaranteed with one person. So even if you're the only person who signs up that day, it will depart. And they are really fun and really cool. It offers something a little really unique and spicy. Uh, it's like having a friend in the destination to show you around. I, Highly, highly recommend them, especially because you won't be spending that much time in Split. Just to give you an idea, if you are booking pre or post accommodation, um, we do stay in the Hotel Lux Split. So it's a stylish hotel, it's 400 meters from the palace in the area, the ferry port and the beach. Easy, simple, beautiful, comfortable before you get on your adventure cruise. In day two here, you uh, have your guided tour of Split in the morning, followed by an afternoon tour of Kirka National Park. Dinner are back on board the Pal Peregrine Dalmatia. So a normal day, ebb and flow. You can take part in as many activities as you like, sit on board and have a drink and read a book, or go off into town and explore on your own. But for this day here, um, after breakfast on board, head off on your guided tour with, to Split with our local guides for the laneways and squares, um, beautiful parts of the old town. And in the afternoon, we'll take a private bus transfer up to Kirka National Park. Um, in the evening, we do include um, breakfast and, and dinner as well on board the ship. Um, and then during the day when you're out and about, take the local leader's recommendation for an alfresco restaurant. On day three, we're sailing from uh, sailing, sailing to Havar and spending the day exploring Queen of the Dalmatia Islands. So we'll have one of those lovely swim stops on the way before arriving at Starry Gar, Havar's old town. We'll actually visit a local farm and try some local produce and walk through the nearby lavender fields. Um, take an orientation walk with your leader and then enjoy free time to explore after that. On day four, we sail to Apizen. Uh, we jump in small wooden boats for a leisurely cruise the surrounding wetlands. This is a really unique experience as well that not many people get to do when they're heading to Croatia. Um, we end up actually at a beautiful local restaurant overlooking the water here. Um, and then in the afternoon, venture out to friendly bars around the town square to meet with the locals. It's a pretty uh, beautiful day all in all. On day five, we are heading into Balzi and Herkesvenia. So we actually get to travel by minibus. So we're going to hop off our beautiful Peregrine Dalmatia and uh, head off with our local guide to do a tour of Mostar and then head to Matsuko Winery for a wine tasting and tour of the vineyard. So you can see um, below here, beautiful, large, vast vineyards in this area as well. 
Um, we include the breakfast on board. Lunch will be at a local restaurant. And then included is a barbecue dinner on board the Peregrine Dalmatia as well. On day six, we're sailing from uh, sailing to Corchula with a swim stop along the way, of course. Enjoy an orientation tour of Corchula and then free time in the evening to enjoy the old town. So this is the birthplace of Marco Polo, slow pace, absolutely beautiful. Just rest, relax, go off and do optional activities, maybe do a cycling trip, enjoy some wines and fresh seafood. The day is up for yours to explore. You can see here from the pace, you are in a different port every day, but because it is a small group, you do not have to rush back to the ship. Um, if you are getting back late, the ship's not going to leave without you. I think that's fantastic as well, but don't be that person that's late uh, that we have to wait for all the time. <laughs> and then on day seven, we're sailing back to Dubrovnik. Swim stop along the way, of course. And then you have an afternoon tour of Dubrovnik, which is included. Um, when we return to the ship this evening on our last night, this will be your captain's dinner um, to have with your new travel companions. On day eight, we end in Dubrovnik. So a great destination to end in. You can absolutely add additional time on at the end. We offer accommodation in Dubrovnik or you can travel elsewhere. Um, and we do have those urban adventures available. So if you didn't get your fill of Dubrovnik, you can try the Lonely Planet Experience Crowd Free Dubrovnik Early Morning Sightseeing Tour. I've done this one myself. It's great if you're a morning person like me because you get up at the crack of dawn and have your coffee and go out and explore Dubrovnik before all the tourists get there. And of course, if you're into the Game of Thrones, I don't know who is after the last ending. I don't even watch it, but I know that it was a terrible ending. Um, but you can still do the tour if you want. So next, we're going to hop down to the Galapagos, a little bit closer to home. The Galapagos has been a destination that has actually been selling quite well for us at Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures throughout COVID-19. What we're seeing the trend leaning towards for us is um, Big bucket list destinations, as well as destinations that get travelers outside and away from big cities. Uh, the Galapagos has been big, Peru, as well as Antarctica, which I'll touch in on at the end as well. So looking at the Galapagos Islands, why Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures? Well, I've definitely touched on the small ships and small groups um, quite a bit. That rings true for Galapagos as well. We've got the specialized service and local leaders and guides. Again, we've been around for 30 years. We do have a local office. We have many local offices around the world, um, but we also have a local office in Quito. Um, they're on the ground. We've been, well, it's our office. So we've had our ground legs on the ground for quite a while. Um, really fantastic people. And in the Galapagos, you do really have to be conscious of how you're traveling and who you're traveling with, because it is such a delicate ecosystem, um, wildlife, and obviously just in, in general as well. This is where your floating boat boutique hotel does come into play. You're going to have those local and unique activities. And of course, safe travels is uh, paramount. When we look at our inclusions for our Galapagos cruises, um, almost all, if not all of our, well, all of our cruises actually, because we do have we to go to the Galapagos Islands, you can cruise or you can stay on land. For all of our cruising options, we include a hotel at the beginning of your tour in Quito and on the last night in Quito. And this is because if you have a delayed flight or your baggage doesn't arrive on time, you want to make sure everyone gets on board without any issues. All of your airport and land transfers throughout the tour are included. We pre-register the tourist card that you need to enter the Galapagos Islands all meals while on board, including tea, coffee, and water, snorkeling equipment, and beach towels. And of course, it is a small group size. So for our Galapagos trips, our group size is actually smaller. Our maximum traveler um, allowance on board is 16. And we have an eight to one crew to guest ratio. So it's quite, um, quite small as well. Um, and this does cater towards our Peregrine Adventures and our Intrepid Travel Comfort Passengers, where we include a complimentary arrival airport transfer as well. So from the airport to your first hotel in Quito at the beginning. So I'll give you an idea 
of where you're going to be staying in the Galapagos Islands. This is actually really exciting because in 2020, we launched our new um, La Grande Daphne. It's in one of the newest ships on the water in the Galapagos Islands right now, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So take a look. So that is our new La Grande Daphne. Um, we're excited to have it on the water. We do also have another ship, uh, the Grand Queen Beatrix. Um, and it's fantastic because it is fresh, new on the water, um, as well as if you are interested in chartering out one of our ships uh, for just your family or friends, so you can travel as a bubble uh, to the Galapagos Islands, we can absolutely do that. And we do offer special pricing if you are coming in a group. So definitely talk to Tom about that. And of course, some features on board, as you can imagine, um, we do have various types of cabins, again, all guaranteed portholes or windows, ensuite bathrooms, air conditioning, snorkeling equipment, large sun deck with outdoor dining and bar, indoor lounge area, and tons of islands are visited on our tours. Um, and a choice of itineraries, our itineraries range from six days to 17 days. So it really all does depend on what you want to see and how much you want to see. And that's where this comes into play. We have a lot of information on our website, but really who you should be speaking to is Tom. Um, Tom can go through this with you in depth. There's a lot to see in the Galapagos and whether you are short on time or you really want to embrace it all, you could spend, I mean, you could even spend more than 17 days there. Um, it is an all round season destination, but there are definitely different times of year, depending on which animals you'd like to see, um, depending on the temperature of the water. Uh, if there's something specific that you want to see, you can definitely cruise through our map here, um, as well as online and, and see which animals are gonna be out, which ones are going to be mating, where the best place to spot the blue footed boobies is, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't know where to start, definitely start reading. You've got some, a ton of time to start planning your ultimate Galapagos adventure. Of course, most people do want to go because it is such a biodiverse location. You'll see animals that you cannot see anywhere else in the world. Um, you can get up extremely close to animals. We have a lot of photographers that go down and also water lovers as well. For our ship um, experiences, you are spending a fair bit of time near the water and in the water. Just gonna highlight one itinerary today, which is our ultimate Galapagos, Central Islands. You can see that we always do include that flight. So that flight that's listed there is included for you. Um, we're hitting North Seymour Island, Bartolomeo Island, um, Isla Santiago, Isla Fernand, Fernandia, um, and much more. I'll let you pronounce those because my pronunciation of Spanish is poorer than it should be. I should have taken up Spanish during the lockdown. <laughs> but this trip here, I just want to point out how many activities are included. If you're ever concerned about being on a ship experience trip and not having enough to do, getting bored, or feeling like you're going stir crazy, you definitely won't. Um, you don't have to partake in all the activities, of course, but many people do. Um, most of the activities will include, as you can see, um, beach walks, you'll have wet landings where you get in the water, um, snorkeling, um, island walks, island orientation. All of the trips will have a naturalist guide on board. Um, so you're definitely, you, you don't have to get an additional guide. Your guide will know everything and absolutely 
everyone and every animal that is crawling on the island that you're on. Um, again, tons of snorkeling, beach walks, you're visiting Buccaneers Cove, um, you've got the Sierra Negra Volcano Crater Walk, um, and the list goes on and on. So you're definitely not going to miss out. Something that might um, come across your mind is, um, am I going to be comfortable on this ship? Am I going to be comfortable um, doing and taking part in the activities? It really is up to you to go through the itinerary and speak to Tom in depth about um, any physical limitations that you do have. Um, do you like water? Is, is water something that you're not as comfortable being around? Um, with our ship, of course, you can exit over the side of the ship. Um, in on many islands because the islands are quite remote um, and there a lot of them don't have the docks. You will be getting into a dinghy as you can see here and being taken into land. So that's one thing to consider as well. And there are some hikes and walks. Um, not many of our trips are overly strenuous, but you will be walking throughout the day in um, in different climates as well. So you can definitely take that into consideration. But it is definitely a destination where you're going to be outdoors every day um, and seeing a new sight and sound every day. And now we're going to cool off a bit right before we end off uh, with the ultimate bucket list trip. Just a tease today, because I know myself and Tom just chatted about it briefly, but Antarctica. Antarctica has been something that I have talked about to Blue in the face for the last couple months. I think it's a wonderful trip to start thinking about now with COVID-19 because you can book far in advance. Um, we do have our flexible booking policies, um, safe travel policies. But when you travel with Intrepid Travel, we do, um, we do offer an expedition style trip. So you have less than 200 people on board your vessel. Uh, the real idea is to get off the ship as much as possible when you are down in Antarctica. Uh, with daily landings um, and optional activities. Of course, when you are on board our ship, you do have almost everything taken care of for you, meals, um, as well as activities, including yoga and fitness, um, saunas on board, you have your um, heated salt water pool. Of course, all of your expedition leaders are there to give talks and orientations and lectures to learn about what you're getting yourself into. Um, we do offer a handful of itineraries. This is just one, our journey to uh, the Antarctic Circle. This one is a 14-day uh, journey um, down as well. So we'll just highlight a few of the activities that you could think of booking ahead of time. So we are looking to lock these in for 2022, 2023, on board our Ocean Endeavor. And of course, taking part in the polar plunge, getting some amazing photographs. We do offer activities like our polar camping. Um, these activities here that I'm going to point out, they do need to be booked in advance um, and they do come in limited availability. But our polar camping is one um, blockbuster hit we offer. Polar snowshoeing, which can actually be booked on board, but we recommend booking in advance. Polar kayaking as well as polar photography. So again, just a tease before I wrap up, if this is something that you're interested in, definitely speak to Tom. Um, at the moment, we always recommend booking in advance. The early bird truly does get the worm. And we have just launched our departures and our pricing for 2022 and our 2023 Antarctica season. So you can get planning now. Um, perhaps it's journeying to the Antarctic Circle for Christmas and New Year's. Who knows whatever happens to have is in store for you. So with uh, that in mind, I just want to wrap up and discuss COVID-19, touch on the elephant in the room. Um, we do have some conditions of carriage and a few other things that I'll touch on now, but there are going to be some changes for when you are booking travel and, and of course partaking in travel whenever that may be, depending on when we can safely do so. But a few things um, that have changed, if you are traveling with us during COVID-19 um, on the day one of our trip, our welcome meetings, all travelers will be required to fill out health questionnaires asking you to disclose whether you've been diagnosed with, had symptoms of, or knowingly been in contact with, or anyone with 
COVID-19 within the past 14 days. We, of course, always, always, always recommend all travelers check the government foreign travel advice of both your home country and the destinations you're traveling to, which Tom can obviously help you with. And of course, our changes due to COVID-19, we have a full um, health and safety guidelines in place, of course. Um, you can definitely check it out on our website or Tom can forward it to you, uh, our full document that is easy on the eyes. Um, our leaders, staff, and suppliers undergo additional COVID-19 training, stricter sanitation protocols for vehicles and ships, um, hand sanitizing. And the big thing is that our local suppliers, including our accommodation, activities, everything that we do on the ground, must not only follow Intrepid's health and safety measures, but also the local health and safety measures as well. Um, what that will look like for small ship cruising, we don't know yet because we have not and we are not planning within the next couple months to um, launch small ship cruising, but we do hope so too. So if you are booking onto these trips, we definitely have um, those answers for you. So when it comes to safe travels, you've seen this green symbol before. I just want to point out that safety and um, hygiene and sanitization is, is not new to Intrepid Travel. Uh, we receive the World Travel and Tourism Council's Safe Travel Stamp which provides travelers with assurance that we have adopted health and hygiene global standardized protocols so you can experience safe travels. But through and through for the last 30 years, uh, we've been building a reputation on our style of travel, but also safety um, on the ground. And that is paramount for us. The most important thing for you to walk away with today, I think is knowing that things happen and we want to give you as much peace as mine and be as flexible as humanly possible. So when it comes to payment, there are some exclusions to this, um, mostly Antarctica, but for our regular bookings, you do not have to make a final payment on your tour or your adventure cruise until 21 days before that trip departs. Um, if you need to cancel your trip uh, up to 21 days before departure, you can transfer your deposit to another file, um, give it to uh, a friend or family member, change it to another trip, that deposit is flexible. So you're not going to lose that as long as you let us know 21 days before your departure that you're either no longer going to be able to travel or are not ready to. Also, when it comes to change fees, if you let us know about your change in plans 21 days before your departure, again, there will be no change fees. We can change, keep that deposit on file or we can change that trip to alternative date or, determine, or alternative departure. And if you are feeling unwell due to COVID-19 and provide a medical certificate, your trip payment will remain on file for future use. And if something does happen in destination, you must leave tour due to illness, we will keep a credit on file for the days of the tour that have gone unused as well. So you can put that towards a future trip as well. And with that, I just wanna thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me ramble on. Uh, and Tom, you can let me know if there are any questions. Uh, Cass, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, you know, you know, I think the world of you and uh, how hard you always work. So I appreciate you giving up your evening. I thought of some, doing something unique here and uh, open up the microphone to the entire audience. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Okay, let me just get that done. And where are we here? It says unmute all participants. You should be able to unmute yourself now. And I'm hoping I see uh, Richard Taylor here on the uh, call. I'm hoping to put you on the spot if I may. Uh, Richard, if you could unmute yourself. And uh, I know that you've done a Croatia cruise with Peregrine. I'm going to put you on the spot here. How did you like it? Yeah, I'm, it's Richard. Having Hang trouble hearing you. Two machines going at the same. Oh time. yeah, right. Okay, there you are. Hang on a sec. Let me shut one down because this one they both. Okay, here we go. Sorry, you had a question for me. Yeah, um, you've been on a Croatia cruise, and sorry to put you on the spot. Um, tell us a little bit about it. What did you think? Well, I took um, 
Peregrin trip starting in Rome, sorry, not Rome, and down the coast into Greece. We took, uh, uh, we cruised from Dubrovnik, um, I forget even the places we went, but we ended up in Greece and we came back. It was uh, like magnificent. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm just looking at some of the trips you went through, like Galap Galapagos, maybe 20 years ago, seeing what you're doing. So I got to go back. Um, I, I love being on the water and, and these small ship cruises just suit me perfectly. You go into ports, um, you know, the, the, if you want to get off the ship and go into town in the evening and go to a bar or go to a restaurant or something, the ship's right there. You can see it. You feel pretty safe. Um, I think it's a great way to cruise. Great. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else who uh, who has questions. If you are, you can do two things. You can put an item in the chat box, send them to us, or uh, if you're comfortable, unmute yourself and just ask uh, through the microphone. I'm I'm still on the air. I'm a huge fan of Perrigan. We've done uh, we do two or three ships every year, except for this year, of course. Uh, we pick spots we want to go to. We get a whole bunch of brochures and look at stuff. And almost inevitably, Perrigan has the itinerary we want to do. So we're very happy with them. Great. Oh, awesome. That's great to hear. Thanks for sharing. I, I agree as well. I do thoroughly enjoy our tours, even before I worked for Intrepid Travel and Peregrine Adventures. <laughs> well, you, I have to say you do embody the, uh, the Peregrine spirit, uh, the way you've uh, embraced sustainability and travel. In the years mm -hmm. that I've known you, that's, uh, that's right up your alley. Uh, personally, I've traveled with Peregrine and Intrepid, uh, two quite different um, experiences, uh, not so much where the cruising is concerned, but where the land trips are concerned. Uh, Peregrine, your higher end, I went to uh, Syria just before the war broke out and to Lebanon. Um, with Intrepid, I've been to uh, some pretty far-flung places like uh, Transnistria, look it up on the, on the, uh, in the atlas sometime, uh, Ukraine, Moldova, Iran, uh, just fantastic itineraries, uh, really, really enjoyed their trips. Is uh, if there's any more questions, uh, let me know now. You can of course always email me. Otherwise, uh, it's coming up to eight o'clock. I think we should um, tying up the uh, be tying up the evening. And the uh, cast, thank you so oh, much. Thank you for organizing for, uh, the evening. My pleasure. Thank you, Cass, for um, uh, for presenting, and Richard, thank you for giving your feedback. I know I put you on the spot there, Cheers. Um, but appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. And I wish you all a good evening. And uh, remember, our next webinar is two weeks from now, and it'll be on Canadian adventures, which uh, we expect next year to be uh, quite popular. So I hope to see you there.